A vast rock squats upon Favnir, and to its stone surface clings the city of Rods at Han. Ye who enter here are subject to the scrutiny of gods, the gate's most watchful eye. The orb which beholdeth the truth of all things. Pass beneath its hot and piercing gaze, bearing down like a second Midday sun. The fragrant haze, a mixture of sweet incense and acrid smoke. The cries of merchants mingled here with lively melodies accented by dancers' feet. Travelers seduced by vivid sound and colors were once swallowed up by patchwork streets. But no such seems to savor now. To what somber present does that divine eye bear witness? Here we are, Megadota. It seems a shame to bring you here directly. Under normal circumstances, it would have been my pleasure to show you the sights. And it would have been our pleasure to see them. Alas, it seems our tour of the city will have to wait. I'm afraid so. Come, we should head inside. Your Excellency, may I present our honored visitors. Ah, splendid. Most splendid. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ahawan, satrap of Radzathan. Our alchemists tell me your assistance was invaluable in the creation of the warding scale. Such deeds ought to be recognized in person. Thus did I have Young Varshan convey you here forthwith. On behalf of my people, may I express to you our sincere gratitude. A regrettable incident indeed. Her colleagues insist that we honor her wishes and trust in the talisman, that it will be instrumental in saving Nidana and the others. I am eager to hear your opinion on the matter, so let us not stand on ceremony. Come, sit. I think not. This charade has gone on long enough. Show yourself. Forgive me, but were you expecting musicians, perhaps? 
There are no performers waiting in the wings at present, but arrangements could be made if you'd prefer. Nay, he hath the right of it. The time for artifice is past. Raise the curtain. As you wish. You travel as assistants to the students of Valdez, but you are known to me. Even here have we heard of the science of the seventh dawn. I am Vritra, and for years uncounted hath this isle served as my abode. Sibling to Hreiswelga and Nidhogg. I, mine elder brothers, of Midgard's former spawn, I was last to hatch. Well, isn't this a surprise? We were told Rods at Harn had an alliance with the dragon. Not that a great worm sat in the Sartrap's own hall. A necessary subterfuge, as the true tale of our nation history illustrates most effectively. In the beginning, the rock upon which our city is built was home to Vitra, and Vitra alone. In time, the ancestors of the Matanga came to the island and established a foothold. But never did they dare disturb the worm's lair. Next to arrive with the Aura. Adopting the example of their Arkasodra allies, they too treated Vitra with reverence and respect. And for many years, an understanding between our forefathers and the Great Worm endured. Until marauding heroes from the mainland came, threatening to shatter our peace and tranquility when it seemed all would be drowned in blood. Vitra himself came forth and quelled the rising conflict. A peaceful accord was reached, and oaths sworn in Vitra's name. Thus begun the dragon's governance of the fledgling state, which was to grow into Rad's Adhan. But if Vitra is still here, then your position as Sartrap is just... A charade, yes. And one which my family has performed faithfully for generations. Many envy the great worms their power. Were it known that I ruled here, then the fires of war would burn without end. I would not be the flame which consumeth my people. Those few who join me in laying our country's foundations were, perforce, sworn to secrecy. Your eye, it was taken. Tis here, buried within a semblance of flesh. The body before thee is but a simulacrum, constructed by the finest artisans of Razatan. With mine eye nestled within, it doth serve as an inconspicuous vessel for my whim. Ah, that would explain why I felt the presence of a dragon upon our first meeting. I am woven with words fashioned to deceive such arcane senses. Though twas short-lived, it seemeth thy fusion with my brother hath left thee much altered, destiny in warm blood. From the very first, 
We sensed the nature of one another, yet did neither one of us bear his fangs. That is all I need know of thee for now. With my secret thus revealed, I have for you a proposal, not as a worm of the first brood, but as the ruler of Rats and Earth. With all haste must we take in hand the finished talismans and breach this foul spire. Thence, should it lay within our power to spell its wicked influence. Yet even with the assurance of the warding scales, the narrow confines of the tower doth limit the size of our force. And thus denied strength in numbers, thou must choose thy soldiers with care. Just so. Yet though our radiant host is formidable, I see a sure path before. There's no denying it's a dangerous proposition, but the rewards may far outweigh the risk. Just think of what we might accomplish if we could equip all our allies with warding scales. I worry, however, that even the four of us may be too few for what you have in mind. Might we regroup with our friends first to discuss the matter? Tis no trifling task that I have laid before you. Steal your hearts and hone your plans. Such time as you require shall be spent in crafting your protective charms. It seems a quick trip back to Charlien is in order. Whether your request be made as a great worm or the ruler of Rods at Han, I see no reason to refuse, nor will I. request and assaulting the Tower of Zot should be our highest priority. I agree. While I still have questions concerning the Forum and their grand undertaking, we have all but exhausted our avenues of investigation. Simply pressing them any harder on the subject will almost certainly result in our expulsion. Therefore, I suggest we explore the Ethereal Sea Connection by way of a letter to Master Matoya then make our way to Thavna. I wonder, even with the protection these talismans afford us, what can we hope to achieve once inside the tower? According to Orenvold and Fudola's report, they were unable to free the Amulja. Worse, their attempts triggered the tower's defenses, 
which led to a summoning of Luna Afrit. What does it tell us that the spires even have such defences? Simply pulling a prisoner from the wall is fatal. Thus the direct approach is doomed to failure from the outset. Any further measures to dissuade such actions seem... unnecessary. Unless, of course, there is a way to free the prisoners without killing them. Then it stands to reason that any intruders will be met with overwhelming force. The towers appeared throughout the world in but the twinkling of an eye. Twas by magical means these structures were raised, I surmise. A spire thus conjured must needs be maintained, and I suspect an arcane catalyst, some manner of core, doth lie hidden within. Destroy the core, and the tower ceaseth to be, thus liberating the captives without harm. So we can hope, and I would prefer to enter the tower with a working theory than with no plan at all. Assuming Estrella's reasoning is correct, the chances of the defences remaining dormant are small to none. Any primals will have to be dealt with, and defeating one will likely only lead to the summoning of another. Our every victory will only compound the prisoner's suffering. May we not then divide our forces? Those proficient in healing will focus on sustaining the captives. That duty can be covered by Uriange, Cryon, Yostela and myself. The remaining scions will proceed with the search for the core. Admittedly, this strategy puts both parties at greater risk, but it should bolster our chances of saving the Arcosodra by a considerable margin. If you're to fight primals, then you'd best have at least one healer with you. And I am more than happy to fulfill that role. I found wielding a sage's armament to be rather intuitive, and look forward to testing them against a more challenging foe. It seems we have a plan. All that remains is to carry it out. I will inform Rad Khan of our movements, so let us make our preparations and regroup near the tower. The military post in what's left of the Hamsa hatchery should serve as a convenient staging. That sounds perfect. And remember, the experimental etherite of the confluence is there for those who need it, so there's no excuse for being late.
Is everyone all right? We fortified the captives with what magics we could. Have the defences been disabled? All appears quiet for the moment. The lower floors were disturbing enough, but this place feels... wrong. The ether is heavy and thick, like wading through a quagmire. I believe we stand in the tower's beating heart. What sayest thou, Ishtola? I see it. Ether siphoned from the land runs up through the spire, flowing to a single point. This is the call we seek. Yet something is off. As large as this structure is, it siphons far more ether than is required to sustain it. Tis as if the core is feeding on the energy, consuming it. I need to take a closer look. Curious. There is something there embedded inside the core. A man's limb. This is what we came to destroy? Yes, if you'll be so kind. And that should be the end of it. What now? My theory that the tower might come crashing down following the core's destruction doth appear to be correct. Bully for you! And how are we supposed to survive the fall? Oh, what happened? Where are we? By my reckoning, we're still on the island where the tower stood. But it is as if it never existed. Hardly a scratch. But how? Graha wove a levitation spell at the last moment. Large enough to catch everyone, it would seem. That explains the lack of obvious injuries. The expenditure of so much ether has taken its toll. He will need plenty of rest, but should otherwise be none the worse for wear. Then the immediate problem is what to do with our new friends here. They'll be much changed for their time in the tower. Even if their bodies are intact, I doubt we could say the same for their minds.
Angelo and I will take care of that. I have every faith in you, Alizé, but there are just too many for you to treat alone. We'll send at once to Eorzea for more porksies, and call on the local mages to lend a hand. Hail, Scions! We were watching the tower when it simply disappeared. What happened here? The threat is banished, and thy people delivered. They are, however, in need of treatment and we of a secure locale and helping hands to assist us in its provision. You shall have all this and more. Come, let us convey these unfortunate souls to the city.